For decades, the foundations of modern physics have stood tall like cathedrals, intricate, elegant, and seemingly immovable. We believed we understood the rules, how galaxies are born, how stars ignite, how matter organizes itself in a chaotic universe governed by time, space, and gravity. We taught these principles in classrooms. We programmed satellites with them. We even used them to predict the fate of our universe. But when the James Webb Space Telescope pointed its ultra-sensitive eye into the most ancient corner of the cosmos, it didn't find confirmation. It didn't find comfort. It found a contradiction so massive, so clear, and so undeniable that the very equations we've trusted for over a century now tremble at the edges. What Webb saw wasn't just strange, it was impossible. A galaxy, blazing with mature stars, massive in scale and fully structured, sitting calmly in a time when, by every known law, such a thing could not yet exist. And it wasn't alone. Webb kept seeing more, and with every new image, the scientific community felt like it was waking up in a universe they no longer recognized. This isn't about small anomalies anymore. This is about the sudden collapse of the physics we once thought was eternal. Because what James Webb has just detected doesn't rewrite the laws of the cosmos. It shatters them. The James Webb Space Telescope wasn't built to casually look around. It was built like a time machine, crafted to peel back the layers of the universe and let us peer into the very beginnings of existence. When it turned toward a seemingly unremarkable patch of space, it detected something bizarre, a brilliant point of light that stood out like a lighthouse in a storm. At first, astronomers assumed it must be relatively close, given how intensely it glowed. But the redshift, the stretching of light due to the expansion of the universe, told a very different story. This object, dubbed CEERS 93316, wasn't nearby at all. It was sitting at a redshift of 16.7, which places it just 230 million years after the Big Bang, a blink after the cosmic clock started ticking. And yet, this galaxy wasn't a flickering, half-formed cloud of primordial dust. It was a giant, with stars already fully formed and organized in complex structures. In other words, it didn't just exist, it had evolved. That's like finding an adult human in a newborn's crib. It simply shouldn't be possible. But Webb wasn't done. When astronomers zoomed in deeper, they found more of these anomalies, whole clusters of massive galaxies, glowing in defiance of every formation model we've ever trusted. Either the physics of the early universe are wrong, or we're looking at something we've never seen before, the fingerprints of a cosmic process we cannot yet explain. Once the initial shock settled, scientists began doing what scientists do best, measuring. They calculated the mass of these ancient galaxies, estimating how much gas, dust, and dark matter would have needed to collapse so quickly to produce what Webb had observed. The numbers were staggering, some of these early galaxies appeared to have the same mass as the Milky Way, but formed just a couple hundred million years after the Big Bang. For comparison, the Milky Way took over 13 billion years to become what it is now. According to standard cosmology, in the first few hundred million years, matter hadn't even cooled enough to form stable structures. The cosmic microwave background, the residual heat of the Big Bang, was still bathing the universe in a haze of radiation that should have made star formation nearly impossible. And yet, here we are, staring at elegant structures that resemble galaxies in the modern universe. Some of them had already exhausted their star-making gas completely, meaning they had burned through their fuel in a short, intense burst of activity that leaves modern galaxy formation models gasping for air. To make matters worse, these galaxies seem to exist in clusters, implying not just isolated miracles, but a whole ecosystem of impossible mass. Either our timeline is wrong, or there's a mechanism working at cosmic scales that we've completely overlooked. In both cases, the implication is devastating. We don't understand how the universe builds itself. And that means everything from the Big Bang to our models of dark matter may need to be dismantled and rebuilt from scratch. The James Webb Telescope is revealing not just objects, but the limits of perception itself. 
These galaxies exist so far away that they should, by all means, be hidden beyond the Hubble horizon, the theoretical boundary beyond which light has not had time to reach us since the beginning of the universe. And yet, we see them. This introduces a paradox so uncomfortable, many scientists are trying to avoid it altogether. The light from these galaxies should not be visible. The only explanation is that our understanding of space-time expansion, the very fabric of the universe, is incomplete. As the universe expands, so does the Hubble horizon, and with it, new galaxies come into view. But Webb isn't seeing galaxies that just cross the horizon. It's seeing galaxies that were never supposed to be there at all, at distances that suggest a faster-than-expected acceleration of cosmic structures, or worse, that the geometry of space itself might be bending in ways that our equations can't model. Think of it like trying to look at the edge of a painting that keeps growing faster than your eyes can track. You're not just seeing something old, you're seeing something impossible. And that impossibility is speaking back in the language of shattered symmetry, disrupted causality, and broken models. James Webb isn't just a telescope anymore, it's a reality check. One that's now telling us, you were wrong about the rules of this universe, and the universe has just started to show you why. The cracks are widening. With every new image, every redshift confirmed, every unexpected signal interpreted, the Big Bang Theory, the cornerstone of modern cosmology, begins to look more like a patchwork than a masterpiece. Scientists have begun proposing alternatives, from cyclic models of the universe to radical ideas like emergent space-time and quantum cosmogenesis. Some theorists believe we might be seeing the afterglow of a previous universe bleeding into ours. Others suggest we're misinterpreting the structure of time itself, that perhaps time did not begin at the Big Bang, but emerged later, a byproduct of entropy, not a cause of it. Still more daring voices are whispering what was once heresy, that the redshift might not be a measure of distance and time at all, that perhaps light behaves differently in deep time, or that there are physical constants which evolved with the universe. All of these ideas have one thing in common. They completely discard the current standard model. And yet, they are no longer dismissed as fringe. Because now, with James Webb revealing more contradictions than confirmations, the scientific community is being forced to confront the unthinkable, that the Big Bang, as we teach it, as we model it, as we fund it, may be an approximation at best, or a beautiful lie at worst. For decades, dark matter has been the unseen scaffolding upon which all our cosmic structures were built. It's invisible, undetectable through light, and yet it was always assumed to be there a mysterious substance making up nearly 85% of all matter in the universe, silently guiding the formation of galaxies like an invisible architect. But the James Webb Telescope's early images are throwing a wrench into that framework. The galaxies it's detecting, those ancient, massive, structured clusters, appear to be forming and evolving at rates that would require far more dark matter than current models allow. In fact, some of them would need dark matter densities so extreme that they would collapse into black holes under their own gravity. Others seem to be forming in regions where dark matter shouldn't have been dense enough to allow this level of gravitational binding so early. This isn't just a numerical error. It's a foundational contradiction. If dark matter is behaving differently in the early universe, or if its density and distribution defy our simulations, then the physics underpinning dark matter might be fundamentally flawed. Worse still, it could mean that dark matter isn't real at all, or that what we're calling dark matter is actually something entirely different, a placeholder for a force or property we have yet to even conceive. And if that's true, then the structure of the cosmos may be governed by principles that are as alien to us now as quantum mechanics once was to Newton. One of the most unnerving implications of Webb's discoveries is that time, the most taken-for-granted dimension of our universe, may not be uniform. The galaxies Webb observes don't just appear too massive or too bright, they seem to evolve faster. In some cases, their stellar populations appear to be older than the universe itself was at that point in history. That's not just a red flag, that's a cosmic alarm bell. If time ticks differently in certain conditions, 
say, under extreme density or in regions where quantum fields fluctuate violently, then the entire notion of cosmic time becomes slippery. This opens the door to radical models, including variable speed of light theories, modified gravity, and even the possibility that time itself is emergent, not a fundamental dimension, but a statistical illusion created by entropy and observation. Imagine that time is not a river, but a fog, sometimes thick, sometimes thin, sometimes swirling backward around a gravitational drain. The James Webb images are, perhaps, snapshots of a universe where time hasn't behaved consistently, where causality is tangled, and where evolution doesn't move in a single direction. If so, then our equations aren't just outdated. They are written in the wrong language entirely. The anomalies don't stop at galaxies. James Webb has detected population three stars, or something terrifyingly close to them. These are supposed to be the very first stars ever born. Massive, hot, metal-free behemoths formed from primordial hydrogen and helium. According to theory, they lived fast, died young, and exploded into supernova that seeded the universe with the heavier elements needed for life. The problem? We've never actually seen one. Not until now. Or perhaps, not quite now. What Webb seems to be detecting are stars that don't follow any known stellar life cycle. They're too hot, too massive, and too metal poor for their time period, yet somehow still exist. It's as if nature had a cheat code, skipping forward in evolution to produce stars that violate the known nuclear processes of fusion. Some astrophysicists are quietly speculating that these could be evidence of pre-stellar collapse events, possibly even failed black holes that ignited in a way we've never witnessed. If confirmed, these stars would be more than exotic. They would redefine nucleosynthesis, challenge our models of stellar death, and raise a question that makes even the boldest physicists uncomfortable. Are there forms of matter and energy at play here that we have absolutely no language for yet? As if the structural, gravitational, and temporal anomalies weren't enough, some of the deep field images captured by James Webb have hinted at an even more unsettling idea. Patterns, repetitions in structure, symmetry and cluster distribution, and even alignments in galactic spin that stretch across billions of light years. These patterns defy random chance and are statistically significant enough to warrant attention. But here's where it gets weird. These alignments suggest a universe with a large-scale structure that isn't just chaotic expansion, but possibly engineered. The idea that the cosmos might possess intrinsic order beyond what gravity and inflation can account for is now being whispered among theorists who were once die-hard materialists. Some draw on simulation theory, proposing that the universe might be a generated construct, a kind of cosmic rendering driven by unknown variables. Others revisit ancient ideas from quantum consciousness and panpsychism, daring to wonder whether the universe has an informational substrate one that not only remembers, but perhaps responds. And the deeper Webb looks, the more it feels like the cosmos isn't just being observed. It's observing back. So now, here we are. After billions of dollars, decades of engineering, and centuries of theoretical foundations, the James Webb Space Telescope has opened a window, not just into space, but into the soul of science itself. What it revealed wasn't comfort. It wasn't confirmation. It was chaos, elegant, structured chaos that contradicts nearly everything we thought we knew. Galaxies that should not exist, stars that should not form, distances that should not be visible, and a timeline that seems more like a fragmented dream than a linear path. The foundations of physics haven't been refined, they've been shattered. And as the dust settles, we're left with one haunting question. What if we've been asking the wrong questions all along? What if the answers are not hidden in equations, but in the gaps between them, in the places where logic fails and mystery begins? Because maybe, just maybe, the universe was never meant to be understood, only witnessed. And now, it's witnessing us. If this video shook something inside you, a question, a wonder, a fear, don't let it go. Subscribe, because what James Webb is showing us is just beginning. Hit that like button if your view of reality has changed even a little. And drop a comment below. What do you think the universe is trying to tell us? We'll be reading every word.
because now more than ever, it's not just about watching the stars, it's about understanding what they're watching back.